What is going on guys, this is Rich here, bringing you my review for The Conjuring 2, starring Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga. This movie just came out, um, I think it was last Friday, depending on whenever you're watching this, of course. And, to be honest, this uh, movie day kind of just snuck up on me. It, it was just, you know, I don't know, to me at least, it, just, it was just like, oh, here it is. And I was like, whoa, okay, so I hit up a good friend of mine, I was like, hey dude, do you want to go catch The Conjuring 2? Yeah, sure, why not? So we went to go see it or whatever. But before I get into that, I just want to say, for starters, I was not a fan of the first Conjuring film. I just didn't like it. I was very excited that it got a lot of good reviews at the time of its release, so I was very hyped, especially considering the fact that a horror movie nowadays doesn't get a lot of good reviews. But I know James Wan, I know, you know, what seeing the stuff he's done with Insidious and stuff like that, and I do believe he um, was involved in the Saw franchise. If, not, if I'm not mistaken, I'm not, I'm not sure. Um... So I've seen some of the stuff that he's done, and, you know, I appreciate the stuff that he's done, and I did enjoy Insidious, and I even liked Insidious 2. Never saw Insidious 3, have no interest. So, you know, when The Conjuring was, you know, getting all this hype, I'm like, oh, okay, cool, awesome, this might be actually pretty good. And the trailers were decent, so when I finally got around to seeing the movie, didn't like it. Didn't like it at all. I did not enjoy The Conjuring at all. Was it inventive? Sure. Did I enjoy it? No. I don't know. It just wasn't, for me at least, anything like groundbreaking. Like, oh my god, this is the scariest movie of all time. You know what I mean? Nothing like that. I've yet to watch a movie nowadays in this current era, I guess if you want to call it, that has terrified me. Till this day, and I will always hold this film in high regard no matter what you guys may think of it. And I think it has to do with the fact that I saw it at a very young age, and I thought it was based on a true story too was the Blair Witch Project. In my humble opinion, I believe that the less is more aspect is far much more effective than showing an on-screen monster that somebody else comes up with. Sure, in their head it might look scary, but not to everyone else. Whereas when you don't see what's going on or what it is that's attacking you, your imagination comes up with something far more terrifying than what somebody else can put on screen, or on paper, etc. Does that make sense? So that's why I will always hold the Blair Witch Project in such a very high regard. I could still watch that movie, and the hairs on my arms and the back of my neck will stand up, I will get goosebumps, because it's just so chilling. I was walking into The Conjuring 2, but before that, by the trailers, I just said, oh man, this movie looks terrible. The trailers weren't very well done. My humble opinion, my honest opinion. I'm sorry if you guys disagree with that, but I'm just stating what I feel. So, with that being said as well, a lot of sequels, just in general, and even in horror movies especially, don't do very well. The majority of them are cash grabs. For example, I feel that the Annabelle spin-off film from The Conjuring 1 was just a cash grab. Did I enjoy it? Absolutely not. I thought it was terrible. There was just probably one sequence in that movie that was good. And that was like the elevator basement sequence. If you've seen it, you'll know what I'm talking about. If not, just look it up on YouTube. It was pretty decent. Walked up into The Conjuring 2. I'm like, alright, cool. I'm ready for a good laugh. Sit down. You know, trailer show. Movie starts. First five, ten minutes of this film. I was intrigued. I said, oh my gosh. That was a very cool opening. Spoilers. If you guys have not seen this film, this will be a spoiler-filled review. So if you haven't seen it, highly suggest you X out of this video right now, pause it, stop it, whatever. Go see it, come back. You guys can further, you know, view my opinions, and then we can have a better discussion. So get out of here, come back. Hopefully you're gone. So, first five, ten minutes, the opening... It's the Warrens, Ed and Lorraine Warren, in the Amityville house. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. Because I've always been so interested and intrigued by the whole paranormal world and stuff like that with ghosts and all that stuff. Whether you believe me or not, because I know we have some skeptics, I've had my fair share of experiences when I was a child. And I still have, you know, seen my fair share of stuff as well. My cousin has, me and my cousin, Chris, have experienced lots of things as a, as kids growing up so that stuff has always just interested me 
So I remember in middle school we would always, me, him, my sister, and his brother, we would always watch the show called Ghost Hunters or like Destination Truth or like we would like call or text each other and stuff like that. Like, oh my God, did you see this episode? Blah, blah, blah. And then as I grew older, there were other shows and stuff like that. There was Ghost Hunters International. There was Ghost Adventures, etc., etc. So that I've always had a a appreciation for that you know that whole world and stuff like that. So the Amityville Horror case or whatever like that, whatever you want to call it, um, just hearing all the different stories and watching all these documentaries and stuff like that, I've always found that very interesting. Because you know, there's there's is that is there like how much of it is believable, you know what I mean? So, when I saw them there in the house, that opening sequence, I was like, oh, that's cool. And I'm still not sure if they really did investigate the house. I'm pretty sure they did, because they were, like, the top-notch, like, these were, like, the people, the go-to ones that you wanted if you had something popping off in your house. So, I found that very interesting. Let me just check if this is still recording. Yes, it is. So then the movie starts, you know, well, it keeps going, I should say. And then we meet the family in uh, Enfield, England, all that good stuff. And I wanted to see how true to the source material that they were going to be with this film. And it's interesting because the movie starts out with Amityville and then this whole Enfield parent poltergeist case, I should say, was dubbed England's version of Amityville. So it was really cool that they opened up with that and then the rest of the movie is based on the Enfield Poltergeist case. So that was pretty cool. So, you know, we're introduced to the family, some of the characters, just all the, young, the younger siblings, the bit of the older siblings, and then the mother. You know, it's a very sort of dysfunctional family, dysfunctional home, etc., etc. So I was curious to see exactly how true to the source material that they were going to stick to, like I said. And the way that the stuff started off in the real life case is more or less how it started off in the movie with the faint whistling here and there and then the beds shaking and a lot of the stuff that you've seen from the real case was replicated in this film like for instance the pictures of like the girl being sort of flung across the room this that and the other very well you know a, a lot of keen attention to detail and even some of the people that they cast in this film as some of the people who were investigating before the Warrens hopped on board looked almost, you know, like carbon copies, and I found that really interesting. So, once they step in, Ed and Lorraine, that's when stuff starts getting real, and they start doing the other tests, like the water test, where they had the little girl, I'm drawing a blank on her name right now, I'm sorry. So they had the little girl, you know, put a cup of water in her mouth, not swallow it and everything like that, and they wanted to see if this demon that was possessing her would manifest itself. And if it was, in fact, a demon or if it was just her talking in this really dark, demonic type voice. So, in the movie, again, spoilers, if you're still watching, like, go away. In the movie, everyone's watching the girl and she says, oh, he's not going to want to talk if you guys are all staring at me. So I'm like, okay, I'll tell you what, we'll turn around and blah 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 whatever so they turn around and then in the background it's blurry but you see the girl's likeness just morph into the demon and it was really cool how that was well done while the camera is focused more on patrick wilson's character but you can still see like the transformation occurring in the back and then that's when the demon sort of manifests itself so in the real life case they weren't sure if you know if the girl was you know playing around with them and lying, making it up, or if it was actually like this dark voice coming out from her. So, you know, that whole sequence ensues, and then when they turn back around, she spits the water back out into a cup. But, you know, there's the one skeptic in the movie that kind of plays as the opinion as some of the other, like, as real-life people, I guess you could say. Oh, you know, well, she could have just swallowed the water and then took another sip right before you guys turned around. So, you know, there's always those two contrasting opinions always clashing, you know what I mean? So it keeps that real-life element to it. So I found that really interesting how they were able to do that in the movie. It kind of keeps this level of realism to it, you know what I mean, without losing the fact that, you know, you're watching, like, a, a movie, if that makes sense. 
So moving along, I don't want to delve too much into spoiler territory if you guys are still watching, and, you know, I just don't want to give away a lot of the stuff that happens in this movie. So moving right along with the direction, James Wan again, he's a very great director. He gets some seriously crazy camera angles, and one of the things that he's a master at is manipulating the audience in terms of music, sound effects, and just these camera angles. A lot of them, too, are like continuous camera angles, too. Or how he's just able to, it, you know, there's cuts and stuff like that to different camera angles, but it all feels like it's one continuous shot because it's the way that the music and the sound effects and the acting is all together combined into one makes her a really effective scene and a really effective scare. And the suspense is just that edge of your seat gripping the side of your chair type suspense. And he really keeps that in a lot of his horror films. And that's how you can really make sure this movie might have some typical cliches or stuff like that but it's the way that he's so inventive with the stuff that he's given which makes it feel fresh and once you're able to do that and manipulate the audience and you know just catch them off guard then you're doing a good job there are a lot of scares in this movie there were two in fact that got me where you know the suspense is building suspense is building and then once the thing is actually about to happen you see said thing your brain kind of processes it, and then right before, you know, the thing reacts or music kicks in, etc., etc., your brain is, oh, 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 that's that. And then it happens, and then you're like, whoa, and then it catches you too. It's just that much more effective. James Wan, in this movie, he just, he got you a lot of times just doing that. And it's a simple little method, but it's so again effective I hate to use the same words over and over but I really can't conjure up a different word to describe it the acting in this film tremendous Patrick Wilson Vera Farmiga they have great chemistry together the rest of the cast the supporting cast all good the family and a lot of this movie the weight of it was on the shoulders of this little girl the main character so if she you know sank or swam that's, you know, that's the rest of the movie right there. So if she was good, awesome. If she was bad, this movie would have sunk. Thankfully, though, she was great. She has a bright future ahead of her. I, you know, have no doubts about that in my mind. She was great. And, like I said, no, no you know, nothing against anybody else, but everybody, everyone else was great, too. They played their part perfectly. Surprisingly, there was a lot of humor in this movie, too. Not too much. You know, it wasn't shoehorned in, it just felt natural, and it was good. It was nice, you know, to have that little bit of calmness and serenity, and then, you know, boom, just hits you right again. So, all that being said, there's just a whole bunch of... I felt that the character development and a lot of the arcs in this movie were a lot better than the first Conjuring. Again, I just found this movie, overall, way better than the first Conjuring. That's my opinion. Somebody, um, somebody else might disagree. If you do, leave me a comment in the comment section down below. You know, we can have ourselves a nice little debate. I'd love to get everyone else's opinions on this film and how they compare it to the previous film. But overall, I mean, hey, this movie was great. I really enjoyed it. I was pleasantly surprised. I'm like, wow, this actually turned out pretty good. And by the end of it, I was saying to myself, you know, just walking out of the theater, I'm like... I wonder if they're going to make a third one. If they do, hey, I'm on board. I, I'm not sure what else they could do, but, you know, I'm up for a trilogy. As long as it, you know, as it's as good as this one, you know what I mean? Hopefully, you know, we'll see something later down the road. James Wan, keep doing what you're doing. He's killing it, and I can't wait to see what he brings to the table for Aquaman. That's a different video for a different time, but that's pretty much it. If you guys saw this movie, like I said just a little while ago, leave a comment down in the comment section down below. I'd love to get your guys' thoughts, opinions, etc. Let me know if you enjoyed this one more than The Conjuring, the first film, or if you enjoyed The Conjuring 1 a little bit more than The Conjuring 2, or, you know, just, again, sound off in the comment section down below. I'd love to get your guys' opinions. Like this video. Let's try and shoot anywhere between 5 to 10 likes. I'm pretty sure we can do it. Help me out. Help this channel out. Let's help it grow. Favorite this video. Share with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, whatever social media platform that you guys use. Most importantly, hit that subscribe button so you can be alerted whenever we upload a new movie review, Blu-ray review, or 
whenever our Green Arrow fan film finally drops. That's still being filmed. I will let you guys know when it's kind of approaching its release date, but there should be a trailer on the way soon, so make sure you stay tuned for that. And if you guys are interested in the description box down below, I will leave the link to our gaming channel. We have a gaming channel. We have tons of videos there. So if you guys are into that, check it out. Link in the description box down below, as well as our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So if you guys want to follow us there, go ahead. Give us a shout, and we'll give you a shout too. So that's pretty much it. I have nothing else left to say about this movie. And yeah, I enjoyed it. I wouldn't mind seeing it again. So I highly recommend that you guys see it. If I had to give it a grade, probably... Mm, 8.5 out of 10. That that's that's my grade. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Like I said, you know, leave a comment, like, favorite, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching.